بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد ونصلی ونسلم علی رسول الکریم سید الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلی آلہ و اصحابہ اجمعین الی یوم الدین اما بعد وللہ علی الناس حج البیت من استطاع الیہ سبیلا It is the right of Allah over the people to make Hajj to his house. So this is a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an opportunity to get close to Allah Rabbul Alameen. When you are lost, you need to find Allah. We are all lost. Kullukum dal. إِلَّا مَنْ هَدَيْتْ We are all astray and we need hidayat. We really want to benefit from this Mubarak journey then we need to go into gear now immediately for a supercar to reach the top speed. They need to start, the driver has to start with the first gear. So your takeoff and your acceleration is based at the gear that you should be on. Somebody decides, hey, I'm in seventh gear. Let me start with that because that's where I reach my top speed. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. He needs to follow protocol. So we are on a journey to meet Allah. We are on a journey to find Allah. We are on a journey to recognize this great Allah, Rabbul Alameen Jalla Jalaluhu. But you have to follow the protocols and procedures and it starts from now, immediately. Not a while later, not after I heard so many lessons, not when I get there, not when I'm on the Medan in the plains of Arafat, Mina and Muzdalifah. For a plane to take off, you will need a runway. Without the runway, the plane is going nowhere. Without the runway of Amal to build to this, this, this climax, this apex, this pinnacle, a person should be doing Amal at home, should be doing Amal before the journey. Am I punctual with my Salah five times in the Masjid, takbir ula Safi ula, oh, I'm just there, I grade my foot, I've done, Zor, done, Asr, done, finished it, over with. Unlike movies, when they're going to be launched, people, uh, Allah protect one and all, see trailers, they can't wait for the release date. Adhan is given, Can, am I restless to read my Salah? I can't wait to read Salah, I can't wait to meet my Allah. Am I making tilawat of Quran? Because it's just a routine, open the Quran, read it, finish. I done my one para. Or worst, it is Ramadan and now I open the Quran because it's a month of Ramadan. But when it comes to social media, when it comes to WhatsApp, when it comes to these platforms that will deform us, we can spend hours and hours, the nights will go by, the weeks will go by. And we won't have a clue. So we've abandoned Quran this often who is abandoned. We don't have time. Now we've written the Quran like that. And everything else, we've got time to update our statuses. We've got time to update our profile. We've got time for everything else besides Quran. We can read journals, we can read novels, we can read magazines, we can read newspaper, we can read articles upon articles. We can make khatam of those books, but we struggle to make khatam of Quran. Likewise, the dhikr of Allah, wa la dhikrullahi akbar, such a great amal. But do I take time out in solitude and remember my Allah? When you love somebody, you speak about them often. 
the hearts are void of the love of Allah, so we can't even make the dhikr of Allah. If the tongue cannot move with the remembrance of Allah, this body will never move. But I've got time to make dhikr speak about the creation. I got no time to speak about my creator. I got time about sports. I got time about politics. Got time for the celebrities, the Hollywoods and the Bollywoods and the Nollywoods of this world. I've got time to talk about those on earth, but I'm completely ghafil, jahil, negligent, ignorant, unaware of the one in the summer, in the heavens, Rabbul Alameen. So, I need to see the need, I need to realize, I need to sort my mamla out with Allah. And this is an opportunity, this is a calling, this is a selection. When a senior, when a celebrity, when somebody famous, somebody of status gives you a personal invite to their home, do you wait for that time, in one hour's time, now we'll have to leave, then you start preparing, oh, months before the occasion, you make preparation, somebody's getting married, on the day of marriage, do they prepare or months in advance do they make preparation? Allah Jalla Jalaluhu Rabbul Alameen Khaliq Malik Razik Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram is inviting me a personal invite to his house. What preparation am I making? So I need to have this head of this target to change now, to make peace with my Allah now. Not for when I'm in front of the Baytullah, not when I'm in front of the Haramain. So my mamla what Allah, my mamla with regards to Allah that I, I have breached. Do I have any outstanding salah, qada umri, outstanding zakah, fasting? Is my will in order? All oh, less of Hukukullah. We need to check and tick the boxes. Then Hukukul Ibad. Have I harmed anybody? Made rid of anybody? Owe anybody any money? I need to clean my books with regards to the creation. So the journey starts now. Yeah. Procrastination is the thief of time, it's the thief of Akhirat the thief of all the most valuable assets. So shaitan will want to rob you of time because time is a valuable asset, it is a valuable commodity. If you don't take time out, you will be out of time. Thou Tai Rahimullah, you should take the crumbs of bread soaked in water and that was his only meal he took every day crumbs of bread soaked in water. Somebody asked him, you drinking this liquid food instead of chewing and swallowing the bread, what's what's the hikmat? He said, I can save enough time to recite 50 ayat of the Qur'an. If I had to take the bread and chew it, compared to it crumbed and soaked and drink it like a liquid, I can read 50 ayat extra. Somebody came to see him. And said, hey, the beam of your roof is cracked. It said, Rusk Chapati, you need to repair it. He said, Mahav, I've not looked up at the ceiling of this room for the last 20 years. No time, la yani, waste of time. How much time am I in front of the satanic booth which is telling me its vision and it's channeling me to the direction of hell fire channel? And we want to control, remote control, we've got remotes to control the screens, but we can't control our nafs and shaitan. Imagine if Iblis, when he went astray, then it was his nafs, his pride, his ego that led him astray. Shaitan only had nafs and he became Iblis. We got nafs and Iblis, two enemies. We calm, relax, take it now, easy life. So make your life worth dying for and your death will be worth loving for. Make your life worth dying for and your death will be worth loving for. 
So we think so, it's insignificant, it's not a priority. We're giving time to everything else. What does not matter will one day matter. What does not matter will one day matter. So procrastination, many people say, I'll change later. Maybe it's already late. Later, tells you you're really late. I will change now, immediately, no delay. The fact that the person says, when I go there, when I reach a haram, when I go in a haram, then I will change. It's already a blotch on our resume. It's a flaw in our ikhlas. Because I will change when I'm there. It's what's right in condition. Somebody wants to become a gold medalist in the Olympics. He says, no, when I, when I get to the tournament, then I'll start training. You're not going to go nowhere. You're not going to get dust, forget gold. You're not, you're going you're gonna to be eating everybody else's dust. That's the best you'll get. So preparation needs to be done far in advance if you want to reach the ultimate. And to get to our goal, get to the climax, get the gold medal in Akhirah. We need to start now. We need to start focusing. The husband, the wife, the family need to make mushwara. Allah has accepted us on this Mubarak journey to the Mubarak lands. I want to land in the Mubarak land on the lap of Allah. I want to land the highest stages in Akhirah. So, take for example Ramadan. Some people only fast in Ramadan. They open the Quran in Ramadan. They read Salah only in Ramadan. So A'mal are only for Ramadan. Ramadan is a, a life-changing moment. It's a, a moment of metamorphosis, complete metamorphosis. But why do people not change? Because even, even sun is stopped in Ramadan. As soon as the moon is sighted, sun starts. So Ramadan ends, Guna starts. Ramadan ends, the evil vices start. So their life before Ramadan and after Ramadan is exactly the same. Why? Because there was no amal before Ramadan. So a, a life changing or momentous occasion where we're supposed to connect to Allah and disconnect to the world. We actually disconnect to Allah and get more connected to Sun and Masjid. So identifying a goal and a maqsad. We need to starve our distractions, starve your distractions and feed your focus. Any person will get somewhere. So the body will achieve something when the mind believes. Uh, our mind, we haven't made a fesla, we may have made a decision. So a goal, a target, a ambition, a hadaf. person doesn't have they lost. Sometimes a person has a goal, but it's the wrong goal. They got a goal, but they're making the wrong effort to the goal. So they will make a lot of effort, but the goal is wrong or the method is wrong. So there's a difference. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right things. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right things. If I want this journey to be effective, then what amal should I be doing to make it effective? And it starts from now. So we have to focus on the journey, not the destination. It's not about finishing the activity. It's in doing the activity. So, a person is blind, but he doesn't realize the darkness in. And then he doesn't spend time with Ahlullah, with the ulama haq, the ulama Rabbaniyin, sahbat in the company of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person won't realize how much darkness they're in. Like the son came home, so the father said, let me see your report. Did you get your report? He said, we got it, but I don't have it. My friend borrowed it. The father scolded him. But you know what, it's not good son, you know his parents will think so that he's brilliant, he's got excellent results and they have the right to know so they can teach him, they can train him, they can reprimand him to make it right. 
So uh, the son said, no, 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 you got it wrong. He borrowed it because he wants to scare them. He wants to scare his parents. What the father thought and what the results were was two opposites. What we thinking and what's on the ground is always, it, it, it may be the opposite. So where am I? What are my flaws and what I need to do to change it? Otherwise, by default, man wants to cover up his faults. He's not ready to admit to his weakness. When a person doesn't admit, I am wrong, I made a mistake, Ya Allah, I lived my life incorrectly and I'm ready to start now, 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 don't wait for any journey. Then uh, until a person doesn't identify and accept they have a illness, they will not get it cured. So this person won't progress and Tawbah istighfar is that, acknowledging one's flaws. And uh, it's like a boy told his father that, uh, Abba, I want to see how good your sensory skills are. Can you sign your signature without looking? I said, yeah, sure. I, it's, I, I don't need to look. So the boy said, okay, sure, no problem. And he got his father to sign and the father peeped and it was his school report. It was his school report. So. Until we, we don't accept and we, we, we acknowledge our flaws, the road of progress is very slow. And uh, sometimes we think we have the right answer, I know the solution, I know how it should be done. And Shaitan confidently said that uh, It's a flaw, you created him from sand. And I'm created from fire, ana khayrun minhu, I'm better than him. Logic tells you that a better superior being should not uh, prostrate to an inferior being. But that was his flaw, that was his, his uh, uh, acknowledgement. The fact that he said, uh, said the statement showed how inferior Ibla Iblis was. Secondly is the command of Allah is more important than your logic. That's the answer to those people who come with modernist ideas to regulate and modify deen. Sami'ana wa atana. Allah and His Rasul have said this, I will comply, no questions asked. So sometimes we in such a darkness we don't realize it. Like a school teacher teaching maths, stole the boy, uh, asked the youngster if I give you two rabbits and another two and another two, how much you got? He said seven. He said no, 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 you don't have the right answer. Got two apples, another two apples, another two apples. How many do you have? Two, two, two. He said six. He said, that correct. Now let's take the example of the rabbits. You've got two, two, two. He said seven. He said, how did you get seven? Just explain to me. He said, I got one rabbit at home. So I've added it to my rabbit. So the boy was right, the teacher was wrong. But who's best correct and right and wrong? In this world we'll debate. For akhirat there's no debate. Allah's commands are clear. And this Mubarak journey is clear. It is the route, it's the road to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if it is not done correctly with the right usul, the right principles, a person will be doing the rituals, but they will not get rich in Akhirah. So we have to make sure it's not just a ritual, but it must reach. You should reach to Allah. The Nun Misri, uh, uh, I was explaining, once I was performing to off around the Kaaba and everybody was busy, engaged, looking at the Kaaba, when somebody approached the Kaaba and he made dua, Oh Allah, I am your pure, pure, I am your poor humble servant who is astray from your court, who has run away from your door, I beg you, Ya Allah, that thing which is nearest to you and I beg of you, that I be allowed such worship of you, which you love most. O oh Allah, I beg of you through those saintly ones and your umbia, your, your beloved ones, you grant me to drink from the intoxicants of your love. I want to be intoxicated in your love. O oh Allah, remove from me the jihalat and ignorance that prevents me from reaching your ma'rifat and your recognition. Remove those barriers, Ya Allah. 
that I may reach you and converse with you. So he said this and he fell into tears. He cried so much that he fell to the ground. He fell to the ground and started laughing and went away. So Dhun Noon said, I, 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 I followed him and I thought, so either this is a Hazrat Allah Wala or Majnoon, mad person. He went to the outskirts of the city. He seen me falling. He said, what do you want? Why are you following me? Please leave me alone. I said, may Allah have mercy on your name. Uh, may Allah have mercy on you. What's your name? He said, Abdullah. What's your father's name? Abdullah. I said, everybody is a servant of Allah. What's your real name? He said, my father called me Sa'adun. Are you this famous Sa'adun, the mad person? Said, same people which people claim. And uh, who are those saintly ones whom you've prayed to Allah? He said, they are the ones who walk towards Allah in a manner as he who walks to the one who has made the love of Allah their maqsad and purpose. They have separated themselves from this world in the same way as the one whose heart has been snatched away. Then he said, O the noon, I've heard you say that you would like to know the Ashabi Ma'rifat, the friends of Allah. He said, tell me, I want to benefit from your knowledge. Then he said some poems that the hearts of the Arifin are sunk in the remembrance of Allah all the time. And so does the heart who becomes involved, become near to Allah, it makes them their home. And I have such sincerity, fallen in love with my Allah, that nothing can now remove my heart from the love that I bear from my Allah. So, the Arifin understood their maqsad. Where am I going to? Which direction? So we perform in ibadah, salah, fast, in hajj, etc. But is there any spirituality behind it? Or am I just doing it? So in the world we have an audit system. Have I audited my life? Have I audited my deeds? There's a standard in the world. SABS, other standards of identifying ICO, standards. Do I have a standard for Deen? In the worldly systems, there's a, the, the, the gauges, there's a red light, a warning system. Do I have a, a warning system? Does, does my lights flag when it comes to the year after? In the world, there's rules. What about the rules of Allah? The world has guidelines. What about the guidelines which the Nabi of Allah has left? In the world there's security, there's safety. What safety and security do I have from nafs and shaitan? Safety to protect my akhirat. So we need to check ourselves before shaitan checkmates me. Talha al yami used to say that kunna natahadathu anna man khutima law bi ahadha thalath. If you got these three things, wajabat law al jannah. You got jannah, bariya min al nar. You got protection from jahannam. Man saw ma shahra ramadan, he's fasting in Ramadan and he passes away in Ramadan. Man khada hajj and a person goes for hajj and in the hajj he mata becomes shaheed. Woman khada jama'a tamiran and he goes for umrah. And he passes away. This, this is a journey to find Allah. So a person needs to make an intention to give up sin. The, a treasure hunt, there's no treasure like the treasure of finding Allah. So if you really want paradise and the real treasure to find Allah, then we need to make an intention for this journey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. The amal for today is to make an intention that we must pass away in those Mubarak places. Allah must take our ruh there. Bayna rajulun waqifun ma rasulillah, a person was with the Nabi of Allah and uh, a camel flung him off and he broke his neck. And uh, Nabi alayhi salam said that bath uh, him with water and the leaves of the lotus tree and enshroud him with both his garments وَلَا تُخَمِّرُوا رَأْسَهُ Do not cover his head 
do not embalm him fa innahu yub'athu yawm al-qiyamah mulabbiyan he will be resurrected on the day of qiyamah sayin the talbiya he will be resurrected sayin the talbiya wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen